The final episode of Demon Slayer season 4 was brilliant. The summer season is here and there's a lot to talk about including the fact that we might have the next big romance anime on our hands. And I finally played Mahoyo and it was quite good. Welcome back to another episode of this month in anime. Yes, this allegedly weekly series has turned into a borderline bi-monthly one. I'm not proud of myself either. Make sure to subscribe. Look at the top of his head! <laughs> So Demon Slayer season 4 is over and I loved it. It's probably my favorite season from the show so far which to be fair isn't saying much. Now I apologize for the lackluster editing throughout this section. I cannot use any footage from the show because of copyright reasons. Like I said, I loved this entire season because of reasons I've covered in the past but let's focus on the final episode. Ufotables and yes I'm crediting the studio it was in fact a team effort. Ufotables ability to enhance a story is unparalleled. Unless we are talking about Fate's Day Night, in which case it's the exact opposite. That, coupled with the show displaying a rare bit of nuance and subtlety made this a thought-provoking conversation. The dichotomy between these two and their definition of immortality was genuinely fascinating. The visuals were absolutely incredible as well. It was one of, if not the best looking episode from this series and that's saying something. The explosion looked absolutely phenomenal the single best use of digital components in an anime in my opinion. Nozomu Abe's work was Nozomu abe which is the scientific term for being really f***ing good. And the compositing was off the charts. Such a fantastic finale and such a wonderful setup for the final arc. I had no complaints and my opinions on Demon Slayer are usually not this positive. The summer season is officially underway, although just barely, but the highlight from it, for me at least, isn't Oshin no co or Suicide Squad Isekai. It's not that dear show either, although it is fantastic, more about it later. The highlight for me is Days with My Stepsister. Now again, hear me out. I watched the first episode with moderate expectations. The trailers did look promising but at the end of the day, it is a light novel adaptation and I was blown away. A light novel I like is getting a good adaptation? Isn't that illegal? Appealing designs, meaningful short compositions, visual story telling? Is this a dream? Am I on something? Is this real life? The first episode was wonderful. It really got to the heart of the source material which by the way is not what you think it is. It's a matured slow burner of his story and the anime knows that. Be it the long lingering shots that let the characters and their actions breathe or the way it used lighting to tell a story, it was refreshing. Although the execution was somewhat lacking here and there. I don't know if it's just recency bias coupled with my lowered expectations regarding light novel adaptations but this was incredible. If they can keep this up, this might end up being one of the best modern romances. Please give it a shot if you enjoy the genre. Trust me, it's really good. The first episode of My Dear Friend Nokotan was exactly what I expected and wanted it to be. It was silly, stupid, moronic and senseless and that's a good thing. The show makes absolutely no sense and that's the best thing about it. It doesn't take itself seriously because of course it doesn't. Have you read the synopsis? And it knows that it's one big shitpost. I can't describe the events that occurred in the first episode or make a case for it. You have to see it for yourself. Suicide Squad Isekai was yet another highlight surprisingly enough. Despite being a western IP it retained that signature anime vibe and it needed to because if I wanted to watch a western cartoon I would have watched a western cartoon not this. As someone who has never been a fan of Marvel or DC, I genuinely found myself enjoying this. Perhaps that thing Japanese thing meme was true all along. Visuals were strong too, especially in the third episode. One of the highlights was this long, loose character acting sequence. The drawings were fun to look at and had zero regard for designs or visual cohesion which isn't surprising. Just look at the opening, it's basically an unfiltered Takuji Miyamoto doing his thing. Alia hides her feelings in Russian or whatever the actual title Liz was interesting. It has a gimmick. Girl speaks Russian under the impression that guy doesn't understand but turns out guy does understand. It was cute for like 5 minutes and then it got old. I hope this series has more to offer. I genuinely want it to be good. I don't want it to be stuck in a cycle of gimmick based repetitiveness. I hope it can be more than that. The first episode was in all fairness a lot of fun. Good to see a rom-com protagonist who isn't a perpetual moron 
Amazon, who blushes uncontrollably at the mere sight of a woman. Also, the opening looked fantastic. <laughs> So we spent a lot of time on the previous section, so we'll speed run through this. A trailer for The Rose of Versailles, a studio mapa movie adapting an iconic shoujo manga, dropped and it looked somewhat bland if I'm being honest. I don't know, it just looks like the safest approach one can take while adapting a work with that iconic shoujo style. It's not all doom and gloom. The director, Ai Yoshimura, has a lot of experience. She directed the first season of Oregairu and Blue Spring Ride. Hiroyuki Sawano and Kota Yamamoto are responsible for the music and I'm so sick and tired of the Savano is a one trick pony take. If you go past those it's definitely not AOT title tracks you'll see that Savano is actually one of the most versatile artists in the game and hopefully this movie continues to prove that to people. Besides that we finally got an update on the Uzumaki anime, a project that kept getting delayed. Apparently it will only be four episodes long which makes sense I guess. The manga isn't particularly long. As for the update itself, it was confirmed that the first episode has been finished and approved by Junji Ito himself. Based on the trailer, it's genuinely one of the most visually intriguing projects currently being worked on, so I'm really excited for it. So it's been a while since I made one of these videos and naturally, I've watched and read a lot of stuff in between. For the sake of brevity, I'll focus on a few. I finally read Mahoyo or Mahotsukai no Yoru or Witch on the Holy Night. I refuse to let Ufotable's adaptation be my first exposure to this series. It was my fifth type moon visual novel and I do think it was the weakest of the lot but it was amazing regardless. I felt like that classic intrigue and atmosphere building was missing near the start and the third person storytelling coupled with the detached male lead didn't allow me to get attached to any of the characters, at least not to the degree that other type moon novels did, except for Alice maybe. That final arc and conclusion in true Kinokunasu fashion was incredible. It was great overall. Let's see how Ufotable handles it. Let's see what else can I cover. I don't think anyone cares about the 8th and the final volume of Berserk of Gluttony. What else? Oh, here's a random anime movie. My Oni Girl is a classic example of an inoffensive, safe romance that probably needed two seasons worth of episodes to be interesting. The premise follows, um, character A and character B, I can't remember their names, and their journey through a small part of Japan, really. And I know that doesn't sound like much, but that's because it isn't. It's basically background noise, the movie. At least it looks nice. Don't get me wrong, I do appreciate these short, unremarkable romances but that might just be me. And that just about does it. The video should be 8 minutes in length by now, so I won't ramble on for any longer. That's about it. Liked the video? Check out this other bit of content on screen. Like and subscribe, and until next time.